Hi, so I've been asked a number of times to go through how to make a kiln that's suitable for the kind of work that we're going to be doing, and it's quite a suitable kiln. I think, personally, it's quite a good kiln. Now, it's not very expensive, but you do need to get some bits for it, because we want this kiln to be properly rated rather than guesswork. And because of the way we're going to make it, there aren't ridiculously long drying times or any pre-firing procedures that you have to follow. You just make your kiln and you can use it. Now, what you see me leaning on here is a bunch of fire bricks. They aren't that expensive, and I bought six of them. You're going to need five, so I bought six in case I broke one. I'd suggest you do the same thing. The kiln's going to be about this size on the internal. We're going to fiddle around with this. And your kiln breaks down into three bits. There's the kiln body, which is what we're basically going to make this out of. There's your electronics, and then there's the enclosure. Now, for the body, you need these bricks, because these bricks are um, quite soft in themselves but hard enough to stand the abuse that we're going to put them to but they're not themselves enough insulation you also need some of this stuff which is ceramic blanket when we add the ceramic blanket around there we get a beautifully insulated kiln that's hard enough to put things in and out of and strong enough to support the heating structure that we're going to put in there so it gives us quite a nice kiln structure that's relatively quick to make and uh, dry, as I say, and does a really nice job on the insulation because a kiln works really by balancing the input heat with the input lost. So you can heat the kiln up slowly if you don't put much heat in. As long as it isn't actually losing that heat, it will get up to temperature. If you wanted to heat quickly, you have to put more heat in but still prevent the heat loss. So insulation is one of the prime things about a kiln body. And the insulation is mostly um, best bought. Now, that seems horrible, but to be honest, it's true. I've seen such a lot of things using perlites and vermiculites and water glass. But these ones I've got here are rated to um, 1260 degrees. This stuff here is 1400 degrees. We're going to glue the whole thing together with this material here. And this is rated at 1200 degrees. So the overall kiln will go up to 1200 degrees centigrade, no worries at all. Your working temperature for the stuff that we do mostly, and 95% of the time, that's the temperature range I'm in, is 800 to 1200 degrees. That's where most of this work takes place. If you want to get a higher temperature, you're going to need to get higher rated stuff. These ones are the mid-range, and so they're 1260. But you can get these 1400 degrees C. If you want to go up to about 1600 to 1800 degrees, you need a different refractory. The problem with a lot of the homemade stuff is that at those temperatures, water glass melts and just forms a pool. Um, perlite will spall, it will splinter off. For make your light, forget about it. So when you want to do those kind of temperatures consistently, you need a consistent material to do it. And this stuff, you're not going to be able to replicate yourself consistently. They're not that expensive. Just buy yourself a bunch. They cut really easily, so it's great to work with them. And if you make a mistake, you're going to waste about five pounds instead of hours and hours and hours of work. So this is the best stuff to get, I would say. Now, when it comes to putting the electronics together, we'll go through this again later in this section. You need some of this stuff, which is resisted heating wire. It's available on the net. It's extraordinarily cheap. This is the one that you wire your kiln coils out of. When you want a new coil, you wind this stuff up. You just need to work out the maths for it, and it's really simple stuff, and we'll go through it to get an idea of how much length of that stuff you need, and that, again, is dirt cheap. And we need some control. The main control are these things. This is a pit controller along with the thermocouple. You usually buy this as a kit, and here's a solid-state relay. These three components come together. They're usually about 20 or 30 pounds, something like that, and that'll give you control up to 1,300, so well within the range of what we're constructing. If we're going to construct something that can last at 1,200, our control will do 1,300. Normally, you rate these things all together, so all of your materials, your wires, and your controls are heat-rated for those heats. If you want more than that, you have to buy the right equipment for more than that. It's easy to tell what the right equipment is because it says on the advert when you buy it, rated to such a temperature. Don't buy it if it won't go into the temperature you want it to go into. Like I say, we're aiming for 8 to 1200. This kiln will cope with that easily. Okay, so I mentioned it was three parts. First part we're going to construct is the body of the kiln. And we're going to make it from this, this, and 
this. Those are the three components going to make our body from. It will be roughly this size. Now what we want to do is to take these bricks, because they're too chunky as they are for what we want. We want a um, lab kiln. And we're going to cut those bricks in half down there. So all we have to do is draw a line on there, saw them in half. The beauty of this stuff is it cuts with ordinary um, saws, ordinary equipment. It's not terrible, it's not difficult, it's a piece of cake to cut that with the panel saw. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to cut those in half. Okay, so we've cut four of those in length halfways and these will actually be your kiln body. You will have a bit of variety because you're hand cutting them, so choose two that are relatively level and they'll be the floor. Choose two more and then we need to mark them up with a 15 mil diameter mark in a U shape, just like that. And they're going to be the sides. We have two more for the top. And then the other two go at the back. And that's your kiln body. Now obviously these are a bit high, so we need to mark them off and saw them off. So they're going to get sawn off there. And these two are going to get carved out for the coil, because that's where the coil goes. Now to carve them out, what I use is this. It's a bit of 15mm copper pipe, it's got a slight angle cut, and that's actually great as a gouge for just gouging out that line. Now the secret here is patience. Don't go at it like crazy. It will just gouge really nicely, so you just be gentle with it and keep gouging there and you will get that out and you need it to more or less the depth of this pipe. If you're a bit impatient another thing you can do is use this. This is called a pad saw and if you cut those lines out with the pad saw again going at it gently you'll be able to gouge it out that much more easily. So I'm going to gouge those out. Okay, so once we've cut our U-channels out in both our end bricks, you need to match them up, draw a line, and drill a hole, because that's where the wires are going to go through. When that's done, all we need to do is glue it together with our high-temperature silicate putty. Then we glow on the sides and the back. Okay, that's it glued together. Now, it has no structural strength worth speaking of, so what we're going to do is put these angles on, on the four corners, and use these hose clips fastened together around it, tighten them up to band those together, and that's going to be plenty strong enough. Okay, believe it or not, that's actually the basics of the kiln done. So it's all nice and firm and fitted out. Obviously, we've got to put the coil in. We've got to put the control electronics in, and they're going to be the same. This will work just fine actually, but we need to get it up a little bit higher than 800 and we need to do that easily. So what we're going to do is use that ceramic blanket and put another wrap of insulation on it. So that's what we're going to do. But the, there's a divergence here. Remember I said earlier it splits into a number of parts, the body, the case, the electrics, the door. Now we've done the body, the main body of the kiln, and that's pretty much the same whatever you're going to build. But the case is a different matter. Now, you could do without a case altogether, bolt some legs on, have it standing up there, and then you're going to have yourself a kiln, and it's going to get to about 800, just fine. I want to get higher, and I tend to use things that I find, as you know. I like to repurpose stuff. You don't need to. You buy yourself some sheet metal and bend up a case, no worries at all. Me, I like to repurpose things. <laughs> I found this. <laughs> It's a stainless steel bathroom cabinet. The mirror was broken, so somebody was throwing it away. So I took off the mirror because it's going to make an awesome stand for this. So I'll be able to... 
put my display and my on-off switch right there in the front. This is going to go about like that, something like that. So I'll put the door into here, so the door opens from this bit here. Put more insulation and then bend a case like that, which I'll slot over the top. My control electronics, which is really just the um, solid state relay uh, and the connections to the mains, are going to go back here where uh, nobody's actually going to get to them. But I just thought that was kind of cool actually. So I like that a lot. So I'm going to modify this so that my kiln body fits my case. And if you do a different thing, you're going to have to do that as well. The kiln body, like I say, is always the same but there's always going to be a modification to get it to fit whatever thing you have if you're using found objects, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to have to put some brackets on here, because I need to raise it up by about that much, because I need that much insulation in it. Brackets on here, load of insulation, exterior case, connect the electronics, make the door. That's what I've got to do. If you are using a different thing, then obviously you've got different jobs to do, but it's essentially the same thing. It's really just what makes it look pretty to you. I like that, so that's what I'm going with. Uh, and that'll be in the next part, how I do that modification. So thank you very much for watching this part. Look out for part two, and I hope you enjoyed it so far.